Hi everyone, my name is Tom Pettit and welcome to this episode of Beyond Come Follow Me. This week in your Come Follow Me lessons, we are looking at the parables of Jesus as we're taught and recorded in the book of Luke and John. Luke chapter 12 through 17 and John chapter 11. Before we get into the parables, I'd like to pass on some, uh, some words of advice or counsel that I received from a, uh, an elderly gentleman that was full of wisdom and knowledge. As far as when it comes to parables, when we look at a parable and we understand how Jesus taught, and that was through parables, and what a parable is, it's a, it's a story that is relatable. It's things that we can, we can find ourselves in that story, or at least a lesson from that story that can be applied into our own lives. And similarly to the way that the Lord teaches in parables, he also teaches symbolically. And I was, I was in a conversation with a group of individuals and somebody was pointing out some, some markings uh, on the outside of a temple. And hey, I, Tom, do you think this is what that symbol means? And so we had this little conversation and this, this wise uh, man, he pulled me aside afterwards and he said, you know, when it comes to symbols and parables, the way that the, te the Lord teaches us, there is no wrong answer. There is no right answer as to what the symbol means or what the parable is teaching. The right answer, he taught me, and I've come to understand and believe myself, the right answer is the answer that the individual comes up with or what means something or is important to them, either in that symbol or in the parable. So I think it's important to remember that counsel that as we read these parables, there's no one answer to what the Savior is saying. What the Savior is teaching us individually, personally, is the answer of what the parable means. And so when I read a parable, I might come up with an answer as to what the Savior is teaching. And you might come up with something that's completely different. So who's right? We both are completely right because the way the lord teaches is masterfully it is in a masterful way in that he can teach he can use one story one symbol one parable and make it applicable to everyone in every and any circumstance is that incredible it is incredible so as we go through these parables find out what it means to you what it means to me is kind of irrelevant for you because the Lord is going to speak to you and teach you what you need to hear at this particular point in your life through these parables. So when you get to Sunday school, don't be intimidated by all these answers that are being given. Yeah, they're good. They're right answers. And if you think, well, I heard something different. Great. Good, because you heard what you were supposed to hear, and that is the right answer for you. Have you ever been reading in your scriptures, and you come across a scripture that means so much, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. This is so amazing. I'm learning so much, and this is so applicable, and this is fantastic. Why have I never noticed this scripture before? Why didn't I ever mark this scripture or ever remember even reading this scripture? It means so much to me. How could this possibly be? Well, it's because when you read it previously, it didn't have the meaning that was necessary or desired in your life at that particular time. Now, just the opposite. Have you ever been reading your scriptures and there's a, a verse that's highlighted and you read it and you think, well, why in the world did I highlight that verse? That doesn't mean anything to me. Correct. It doesn't mean anything to you at this particular point in your life. And that's the way the Lord communicates to us. It's personal, individual. And most importantly, it's timely. But we can't get the timing right unless we are in the scriptures continuously. So that's just a little bit of background. It's, it's not uh, me telling you how to do this, but, but just wise counsel that I heard from an individual that, that uh, I wanted to share with you. So of all the parables that we're going through, I want to focus down on one. And that's this, uh, this story of the 10 lepers and the one who returned to thank the Lord for healing him. This comes out of Luke chapter 17 
it's uh, the whole story is verses 11 through 19. I'm actually going to do what I normally don't do, and that's read some of the reading assignment. Um, but I want to I want to read it so that we're familiar with the story because I'm going to highlight one phrase and spend the rest of this video on that singular phrase. So here's here's how it goes. The Savior was traveling. He passes through this this area of town, and there was a, a group of lepers gathered together. And when Jesus passes by, um, the, the lepers, starting in verse 13, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Well, it's a leper, somebody that's got a really bad disease. And so have mercy on us. In other words, please heal our physical affirmity. And in verse 14, and when he saw, so the Savior, when he saw them, the lepers, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And that's the phrase I'd like to take a couple of minutes on. Thy faith hath made thee whole. None of us are lepers. So is this just not applicable to us? We'll just keep reading and not think about it. No, this is very applicable to us. The Lord is teaching so much. What is he teaching? Well, that's for you to decide. But let me share with you one of many things that we could learn from, from this story. He says, thy faith hath made thee whole. So is there a way that we can exercise our faith to make us whole? What's the imperfection that we're dealing with right now? Maybe it's a physical, maybe like the lepers, but maybe it's a spiritual, emotional, mental. Maybe it's anguish for this or that or the other. Whatever it is, our faith can make us whole. Let me break it down a little bit. Let's take each word one at a time. Faith and then whole, and then we'll merge them together and see what we come up with. Actually, I know what we're going to come up with. We're going to come up with something pretty awesome that's outlined in the Doctrine and Covenants. So here it goes. What is faith? faith. We can define faith in a lot of different ways. The Lord defines it many times throughout the scriptures. But I found a, a little book called True to the Faith. It's on your Gospel Library app, and it gives definitions of all gospel concepts and, and ideas and topics and, and singular, singular words. So in that book, True to the Faith, it defines faith as this, in part. It's much longer, but just in part. It says, Having faith in Jesus Christ means relying completely on Him, trusting in His infinite power, intelligence, and love. It includes believing His teachings. It means believing that even though you do not understand all things, He does. I love that definition of faith. Wonderful. So then let's take the next word, whole. What does whole mean? It means complete. It means finished. It means that it's full. But in doctrinal application, whole is only possible through the infinite and perfect atonement. Nothing can be made perfect without Him. We all fall short of that perfection. But if we have faith in Him, rely on Him, trust in Him, depend on Him, accept him, then with him, all of our deficiencies, whatever it might be, any deficiency can be made whole. So let's learn from this parable. First, let's go back to that initial word, faith. This man knew the source of his healing. It wasn't in fulfill. Now, let, let me, I, I had to write this down, this thought that I had, because I got to get this just right. So let me read to you what I've come up with as far as the faith of this leper. This man knew the source of his healing. 
it wasn't in fulfilling or, or the process of healing. It wasn't in fulfilling the instructions from the Lord. It was in following the instructions from the Lord that allowed the miracle to take place. And then after the miracle, he recognized that. He recognized that it wasn't the process he went through, the physical process, the physical steps he took that actually performed the healing, but it was this man's willingness and faith in the Lord that by following his instructions, the Lord's instructions, it was that that made him whole or healed. So how can we be like this leper in recognizing that that doctrine, that it's the Lord is the source of all of our blessings and healings, comfort, peace. And it's not the process that we go through that gives us that end result, but it's our willingness to go through the process to get us the result. I hope I'm saying that the way that, that I'm intending, that it's the willing, not the action. Yet there is action that must be taken in order to show that we're willing. But it's the willing. It's the effort. It's the attention that we give to the Lord and his commandments and instructions that provides or produces the miracle. So then how, after going through that process, how can we continue following the example of this leper in, in recognizing first the source of all blessings and then expressing that gratitude to the Lord. Does it take faith to show the Lord gratitude by thanking him? Yes, it does. Because without faith, we wouldn't credit the Lord for such a blessing. But by going through the action or the process of expressing gratitude to the Lord in a variety of different ways, that in itself is an expression or an act of faith. Let me take you to Doctrine and Covenants section 78. This is verse 19. The Lord speaking of those who have gratitude for the things that he does for us. And he who receiveth all things with thankfulness shall be made glorious. And the things of this earth shall be added unto him, even an hundredfold, yea, more. Breaking it down just a little bit. I love how the Lord concludes there. He says, for those who show thankfulness or a grateful heart, they get certain blessings. They become glorious. And then the earth shall be added unto him, or the Lord, in response to our gratitude, he's going to give us more blessings. And then he concludes, even a hundredfold. And then it's as if the Lord realizes, no, that's even not enough. That's not sufficient. Yea, more, he concludes. So it's this wonderful cycle. We express gratitude to the Lord. He provides a blessing in response to our gratitude in which these new blessings, we have more things to be grateful for. So we provide that act of gratitude back to the Lord in which he in response gives us even more to be grateful for. And this is a wonderful cycle that's never ending. It's an eternal cycle. And isn't that great? But here in verse 19, and he who receiveth all things with thankfulness. So like the leper, the one out of 10 lepers who returned to the Lord and said, thanks. Not only expressing gratitude, but also expressing an acknowledgement of where the blessing originated from, from the Savior. As we do that, the Lord in turn will provide more and more blessings to us. Now in verse 19, the blessings coming, and I, are, I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm going to make a separate point after repeating myself than I've previously made. So those who um, express everything with thankfulness shall be made glorious. The earth shall be added unto him, even a hundredfold, yea, more. Does that not sound like a definition of whole, complete, entirety, everything, up to the brim? And then the Lord says, yea, more. It's like we're spilling over the brim. 
So it's not just whole, but it's whole plus more. Remember that phrase out of this story. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Our faith to do, our faith to acknowledge, and then we become whole through the excess blessings that the Lord is willing and wanting and asking if he can give to us. So one of many, many ways that in which we can express our faith and in turn be made whole is by giving thanks like the leper did. And remember, as I started out, remember that just the way that I'm working through this, thy faith had made thee whole, this isn't the only answer. I mean, this can be defined and, and expressed uh, in many, many different ways. I'm just taking one of them. So how do we recognize the blessings from the Lord? Most of them are obvious, easy to recognize. But here's something I've learned. In fact, a, a different individual who I, I taught me this, and they told me, you know, Tom, you know what a coincidence is? I said, no, what's a coincidence? And the definition of a coincidence that this individual gave that I, I love, and I agree with, he said, a coincidence is a miracle which occurs in our life in which the Lord chooses to remain anonymous. Every day of our life, we think, well, that what a coincidence. What a coincidence. That, oh, that worked out. Oh, it just so happened to work out so nice and just right. Yes, all of those instances are moments when the Lord orchestrates a miracle and lets you believe <laughs> that it's a coincidence. In reality, it's a miracle that he orchestrates and puts into our life. So what's the one of the things that we can do to be more like this leper so that our faith, we can demonstrate our faith and thereby become whole through the atonement? It's to recognize that these things in our lives are not coincidental, but that they, they are, are perfect blessings distilled upon us by a loving Heavenly Father. Another way to say coincidence or miracle is tender mercy. Nephi uses that phrase, tender mercy. He starts out the Book of Mormon with this phrase, but behold, I, Nephi, will show unto you that the tender mercies of the Lord are over all those whom he hath chosen because of their faith to make them mighty even unto the power of deliverance. So he uses the word faith. When we recognize the tender mercies and do so through faith, the Lord in turn makes us mighty even unto the power of deliverance. That's a nice definition of becoming whole, is it not? So Nephi says there's tender mercies out there. Let's recognize them. Elder Bednar then teaches, what is a tender mercy? He answers the question. I believe I have come to better understand that the Lord's tender mercies are the very personal and individualized blessings, strength, protection, assurances, guidance, loving kindness, consolation, support, and spiritual gifts which we receive from and because of and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, rewind the video 30 seconds and listen to that quote 8 or 10 or 50 times. Elder Bednar continues. So now you're going to have to get, do this same thing for this next quote. Elder Bednar continues, for instance, as you and I face challenges and tests in our lives, the gift of faith and an appropriate sense of personal confidence that reaches beyond our own capacity are two examples of the tender mercies of the Lord and the persistence and the fortitude that enable us to press forward with cheerfulness through physical lim limitations and spiritual difficulties are examples of the tender mercies of the Lord. That's the end of the quote there. So our faith can make us whole. We've discussed, I've given a few examples of how this can be in our own personal individual lives. Here's, here's another thought that I'd like to share with you that I, I had to put into words so I got this just right. When This is, this is my testimony. When we acknowledge him and what he does for us, we realize our dependence on him, thus moving us to draw closer to him. 
as we do so, we allow the power of the atonement to become activated in our life. And once we get to that point, He will fill our lives with His love and with His mercy, making us more complete and whole than we ever could have done without Him. That's my testimony. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ.